It was mentioned by our astronaut friends uh, this morning that uh, we are clearly winning the science war, and it's just more and more evidence wherever you go. There isn't any question about it. And uh, Dennis Avery has some fascinating uh, information going way back uh, in history that uh, bears even further on uh, the fact that uh, there is no scientific support for man-caused global warming. Dennis? Thank you, Jay. Let me figure out my system here. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 6,000 years of climate change impact. We're talking here about going back as far as we have civilizations to see disrupted, to look at the potential impacts of the 1,500-year Dansgaard Oshker cycle. 1500 year Dansgaard Oshker cycle. For clever people, we haven't been very successful with our cultures. They've lasted on average 500 years. And we haven't known why, because half of our history has been hidden. The archaeologists could look at the successes. The structures built, the pottery made, the written records left behind, but there were gaps, centuries where nothing was available to the archaeologists. Dark ages. Our cultures tended to succeed brilliantly like the Mayans and then suddenly disappear like the Vikings. Greece collapsed in 2200 BC. They collapsed again in 1200 BC. Southern Greece was abandoned for several centuries in both of those cases. Egypt, its farming has collapsed six times because of inadequate Nile flows. Dr. Kandekar's uh, monsoon system feeds the Nile as well as India. China's collapsed six times. 80% of their wars, rebellions, and collapsed dynasties occurred during the Little Ice Ages. The Olmec in the Yucatan Peninsula invented rubber, pioneered the growing of corn, but they collapsed in drought and disappeared at 400 BC. We call it the Iron Age cooling. People said the Mayans were lost to soil erosion. Wrong. This is how the Mayans farmed. They were water-gathering swamp farmers. They didn't do slash and burn. And they fed probably 10 million people in what's now trackless jungle. And they had a century of drought during the Dark Ages between 800 and 900 AD. Rome. We've got 200 published theories on why Rome collapsed. I will tell you the reality. They'd been importing 1,200 shiploads of grain a year from North Africa and Egypt, irrigated farming. And the tropical rain belts moved south and left both Egypt and northern Africa in drought, and the population of Rome dropped from over 1 million to 20,000. Radical disaster. This was in the Bronze Age collapse. This village probably made swords, defended very well, but abandoned in the violent weather at 1200 BC. We found the cycle in the ice in Greenland, 1984. And you can see here what the ice cores looked like. And the oxygen isotopes in the ice layers tell us the air temperature when each layer was laid down. 
We expected to find the big ice ages, and we did. We were amazed to find this little two to four degree kink in the temperature record every 750 years on average. This is the ice core record of the last 10,000, 12,000 years. Look at the blue cold ages. Those were humanity's problem. Today's Iraq, called by the historians Mesopotamia, seven collapses, beginning with the Ubaid, which didn't even build a city, but they developed the irrigated farming, and they built a religious center, a temple. And it was blitzed by a long Little Ice Age drought in 3900 BC. 2200, the Akkadians, the drought was 300 years long, and we have that from sediments both in Syria and on the floor of the Gulf of Oman. The Gulf of Oman study, in fact, was led by none other than Heidi Cullen, who seems to have forgotten the research that she did in her early years as a professional. Babylon, 1600, Assyria, 1200, Dark Ages, 600 A.D., Little Ice Age, 1650, the 17th century crisis. Each of these collapses occurred during a global Little Ice Age. It sounds moderate, two to four degrees. It is not. You are getting colder. You are getting shorter growing seasons. They're cloudy and they're filled with untimely frosts. There are more mega droughts. 300 years is a mega drought. When you get rain, it comes in more violent flooding rainstorms, and the vegetation, which used to slow down the storm water, is no longer there. The, one of the Mesopotamian disasters was Noah's original flood. Oh, and China gets all of this plus more locusts. And when there's a little ice age, once the steppe nomads in Eurasia had learned to ride horses, when their grass disappeared, they invaded everybody again and again and again, and often brought with them bubonic plague, which resides in the western arid regions of China. Mil tens of millions of deaths from bubonic plague in both the Dark Ages and again in the Little Ice Age. Rat fleas carry the plague. Their rats starve to death. Their rats are not affected by the plague. They find new hosts. Other rats, camels, people. Oh, and... The little problem of wet, cold growing seasons in Europe, the, uh, the rye develops a mold called ergot. It gives people who consume the grain wild hallucinations, and they run the risk of watching fingers, toes, arms, or legs fall off due to internal gangrene. Massive problem right through the to the middle of the Little Ice Age. With all of that, the worst aspect of the so-called moderate little, uh, little Ice Ages is shifting rain belts. The tropical rain belts move about 600 miles north as the ice recedes in the Arctic, and then centuries later, it moves 600 miles back south. So the uh, the Mexican desert can come to Texas, and the rainfall from Kenya can go to North Africa, and then come back after everybody's starved or fled. Oh, the languid South Sea Islands. But remember, this picture was painted by Paul Gauguin after the Little Ice Age ended. This is what the Little Ice Age looked like in the South Sea Islands. 
The sea levels fell three feet, so there weren't any fish in the lagoon. The coconut palms were frozen out, and these people are fighting over the taro roots, the only crop they could still grow. Finally, in the 17th century, we began to apply technology, partly in the form of the cedar invented here by Jethro Tull, partly, uh, some things like the gang plow that allowed us to till the heavier soils, the richest soils, and to bring new crops from the new world like potatoes and tomatoes with our fine wooden sailing ships. And we began to overcome the coarse climate of the Little Ice Ages. The ancients' response to climate change was that the gods were angry, and those gods surely do look angry. The people tried to pray harder, and maybe they sacrificed more virgins. But the 1,500-year cycle brings me back, and it, unwittingly in the beginning, to the message of my first book, Saving the Planet with Pesticides and Plastic. If you can feed the people, your culture can continue and continue to succeed. If you cannot feed the people, your culture, your government, your uh, whole system will collapse in famine and strife. I want to emphasize that this means we are more sustainable than the pessimists think. In fact, what this says is that we are more sustainable than anybody would have dared to believe before 1984. And that's the message of the book. It'll be called Climate and Collapse, Why the Cultures Failed, hopefully out this year. With agricultural research, if we were doing it, we could continue to ensure our success, but we've stopped doing it. The only major support going into agricultural research today is from seed companies, Monsanto, and Bill Gates putting a billion dollars into agricultural research for the third world. The failed cultures starve due to abrupt climate change inflicted by Mother Nature. There is no lurking flaw in our psyches. There are no uh, human-induced climate tipping points, just inadequate farm technology. We can do even better than the Mayans. We have the capacity to improve we have the capacity probably to triple crop yields in the next 50 years, if we are willing to use it, which at the moment we are not. Bill Gates is investing in agricultural research. We can use the biotechnology. We can use energy miles to transport crops from where they grow best to where they need to be eaten. We can use more nitrogen fertilizer, not less. And the key to human sustainability is growing lots of food per acre. Thank you very much.